Well, welcome everybody to a special Friday Facts. Um, today I'm filling in for, for your typical host, um, Heather Altman, who's our guest today. And she's going to be talking about uh, a very uh, important service called Mind My Health. It's a free online tool that helps you keep your uh, health care plans in check. So Heather is um, also the executive director of the of the uh, North Carolina Serious Illness Coalition and wears many other hats. So a person for most of us who needs very little introduction, um, but I will uh, reserve most of this time for Heather today who has some really great information to share. So Heather, do you want to just start for a few of our new folks to just tell us a little bit about yourself before you get into my, my health? Sure, happy to. And both um, Steve and I, wow, we've got a nice crowd joining us. Steve and I are both co-hosting. So if you hear any weird pauses, it's because we're uh, pressing in the admin button as well. Well, welcome everyone. I do see a lot of familiar faces and names, but if you do not know me, I'm Heather Altman. I, uh, I'm the executive director of both Health Sciences Health Innovations Group which is the organizing, supporting nonprofit entity uh, that helps to provide support for the North Carolina Serious Illness Coalition. So I've been uh, really excited. Steve was so sweet. He was going to ask me all these questions about myself, except for I, me as Heather, was a topic of Friday Facts back in February of let's just say 2022. It may have been 2021. I think it was 2022. And I'm so honored that the original founders and executive directors of the North Carolina Serious Illness Coalition, we have David and Catherine Sevier on. Yay! So hopefully they'll share their insights in a while. So David interviewed me in February of 2022. So if you want to hear all about my path and my, I realized we spent over half the time on my teenage years as both, you know, my interest in getting involved with public health. I'm a big uh, aging person, has been public health and aging, so uh, that's why I'm really excited about being a part of the Serious Illness Coalition, because it's always good for our brain to be learning new things, and really, I love the life course approach of the coalition, that together we're looking at how serious illness affects individuals, providers, caregivers across the lifespan. And I'm a caregiver myself, you can hear me, I won my, my health story about my caregiving experience. Uh, but uh, for those of our members who are also mm -hmm. caregiving for our pediatric population, uh, my, my heart goes out to them. Wow, we're letting folks in. Welcome. So it is ironic that I'm talking about Mind My Health, that I have the screen on me because we have David and Catherine here. We have Jessica involved. So I'm kind of the new new kid on the block in that I've been I've known about Mind My Health for a while, but I've been intimately engaged with Mind My Health since September of this year when our wonderful Virginia decided to, uh, got stolen away to a, a, a hospital system in Virginia. And so that's when I really, I'd known about it, David and Catherine had shared, but I really got very involved in Mind My Health and the, um, the grant work that we have to promote it. We have a community care project grant. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the funders, but the License to Give Trust Fund, some of you have heard me mention, we have a grant with them. We've had a grant for the last few years and they've given us the thumbs up uh, to apply for another grant. So in the next few days, I'll be putting uh, the dotting I's and crossing T's and putting some sentence together they have really been supporting how do we do education around advanced care planning and how do we do education about this wonderful tool for people to be able to store and share Mind My Health. And so we go uh, all around North Carolina. After this, in a few hours, I drive to Whiteville, North Carolina, where tomorrow morning, Marisette and I are doing a talk in, uh, we've been focusing primarily in church congregations, primarily in African-American congregations. But in the last few months, we've really broadened it to other nonprofit groups. And so I'm super, uh, we did the LGBT, uh, the Queer Health Fair in Durham. We did that. Uh, I was able to talk with the Association on Aging. And I'll get the dates mixed up, but uh, 
uh, Wednesday the 24th, AARP in Raleigh is sponsoring a workshop for their members. So we'll be going in and doing a workshop and talking about the power of advanced care plan planning and Mind My Health. The next day I'll be with Veterans Affairs doing a caregiver resource fair. So I share that background for all of you as an update. I'm excited to share that with David and Catherine because this is really their baby and their baby is growing. Their baby's like an active toddler or something. Um, Heather, uh, there's so much activity going on to get the word out, but what's significant about the month of April and even this week when it comes to your planning? Thank you, Segway, Steve. That's how we wanted to start. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. That's right. We are so excited. We did. It is April, and it is uh, North Carolina officially. It is North Carolina's Healthcare Decision Month, proclaimed by Governor Cooper. And I really want to thank the members, uh, many of you on this call, that encouraged. I, I, I found a strategic planning document that said, let's make sure that April gets proclaimed in North Carolina. And so we went through that process. So it is officially Healthcare Decisions Month. Next week is officially Healthcare Decisions Day. Uh, I think that's typically April 16th, though there's things happening on the 17th. So you're going to get a love note from me, those of you who are members, which I think all of you are, on uh, Monday about some upcoming activities. And Steve, thank you. I jumped right into the love fest, but that's really why we wanted to talk about Mind My Health this month because it is Healthcare Decisions Month. It is, and really every month should be Healthcare Decisions Month, but we get an extra pump on April, in April to be able to encourage people to have those important conversations with family, to have those important conversations with providers. And then let's get into Mind My Health because you have the conversations and ideally you have access to fill out the documents and we'll talk about that, but what do you do with the documents in a way that it's always accessible? And so I'll take a quick breath and I see people are doing on the chat line, please introduce yourselves. And if you have questions, I've got a little talk, I've got a little video, and then Steve is gonna be monitoring that to ask questions and I may, uh, I may answer them or I may ask some of our lovely audience members to help uh, answer them. So, so let me ask you, uh, for these healthcare decisions day, what are these important decisions that need to be made? I'm so glad you asked. So I, I want to talk about um, the the important decisions and the, the there's a few different documents, but the, the two big documents that generally folks class, there's a few that are classified as advanced care planning documents, but the two biggies are your healthcare power of attorney, uh, and it is called different things in different states. So when I pe speak to people, um, it there it might be called their healthcare proxy. It's basically who do you want to speak for you if you cannot speak for yourself? I think, and I work with caregivers all the time in my in my other work. People always assume that they'll be able to tell their doctors what th they need to know, or that their loved ones will just know. They'll just know where my boundary is of what I, I want or don't want. And the truth of the matter is most of us don't know that even for ourselves until we think about it. And so it's really important that we express our wishes to someone else who is comfortable enough to be that person. And I know Marisette, uh, Marisette is running a health equity workshop today. She wasn't able to join us, but you really want to take some time into who can speak for you. Is it, you know, is it a family member or uh, is it a, is it a friend? Is it someone that can be able to handle and manage other family members' interests? So really who, who do you want to speak for you? And then how do you make that legal? So even in my own family and my husband's family, it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, this person will be in charge. Well, how do we get that in writing? And I was in that situation where we were at the doctors and the ICU people, and they were like, who literally can we talk to and listen and da da da, da. So that's the first part. And the second part is the living will. It's literally where you start to express what level of support you want in terms of aggressive activities or what level of support do you want from a comfort care, but not, cause right, we're all getting supported. So it's not that we don't give support. It's that some things are more aggressive, especially if, if people have passed the line. And I realize we have nurses on this, so forgive if I'm saying this, but if, if you pass the point where the type of support 
might be so aggressive um, that the question of benefit and so the living will is where you put all those documents down. And so what I, I want to talk about, and I love the way, uh, and Catherine is on here, and I love the way it was initially talked about. Mind My Health was initially conceived in birth. I love this. It was, there's a history of it. It was initially um, conceived at the Carolina Center for Hospice of End of Life and End of Life Care. So I want to give respect and support out there. Uh, a number of uh, colleagues uh, were involved with that, ARP, North Carolina Institute of Medicine, other colleagues. And, and in the Carolina Center for Hospice and End of Life was a two-state membership organization. So there was this uh, North Carolina, South Carolina connection even then. And the overarching goal was to provide universal access for individuals, and I'm going to say this because you're going to hear it a few times, to own their own health and plan for care in advance. And the reason why that's important and the Mind My Health tool would be an important tool for them to store their legally recognized advanced directives, right? Because it's not enough to just talk to folks. You got to get the documents down and not on a napkin. But like in each of these states have very specific legally recognized documents. But that it was really important for consumers to have access to it. Historically, advanced care, uh, advanced care planning, advanced directives were initiated primarily through care providers. So your clinicians, your hospitals, hospices, pastoral care. So your doctors and nurses and social workers were asking about it. Um, your healthcare systems or your attorneys. My husband and I went, we went to do a will, a regular will, what's gonna happen with our estate. And they went through and did all of the documents with us. Not everyone has access or the financial support to go to attorneys or is not, don't have healthcare providers. And so Mind My Health was really launched to be, how can the consumers be empowered to take care of this for themselves and be able to share for others? And so this concept, and I love the phrase, and I get no credit for it, of owning your own health and planning for your care in advance. And you'll see that in the advanced care planning area of the um, North Carolina Serious Illness Coalition website. So anything we talk about, you can get access to on the North Carolina Serious Illness website, and it will link to Mind My Health, or you can go directly to Mind My Health, mindmyhealth.org, www.mindmyhealth.org. And so there's all kinds of information, but really this is a consumer empowerment tool. And back in, forgive if I have the numbers wrong, it was conceived around 2016, around 2017, a wonderful partnership with the Duke Endowment uh, and Lynn Hollowell and the team at the Duke Endowment that really acknowledged the importance for this and provided a multi-year grant in order to create the platform. And so this, I am riding the wave of a lot of uh, different organizations, different leaders coming together to recognize the importance and then some really lovely helpful, important funders, the Duke Endowment and then License to Give Trust Fund that would provide the, the funding support. And so it is Mind My Health, I'll go, it is this online cloud-based system uh, that's secure. And it's a, it's a great way to be able to uh, get the information. It does, if you don't have an advanced care planning document, you can download the in South Carolina, their form or in North Carolina, the Secretary of State, their practical form, which I like because it's a combination of a living will and the healthcare proxy, healthcare power of attorney. So it's actually two documents in one. I will pause there to say, well, I'm not pausing. I will take a quick thing and say, Mind My Health was designed that anyone from any state can go on. I mean, you have family in Montana and Wisconsin, they can absolutely go on and they can create an account, they can store their document, they can share it with loved ones. However, right now, the backend support system is really designed in the Carolinas, in South Carolina and North Carolina, meaning that lovely Jessica, who we're looking to, is able to come in on the back end, study what has been uploaded to make sure it really meets the legal guidelines of North Carolina and South Carolina, so we can for lack of a better word, authenticate or validate that this these documents are are witnessed and notarized and have the information that are needed and in, in given the two states. 
And then, and you're going to see in a moment, both in North Carolina and South Carolina, there are links to the health systems with, uh, in actuality and hypothetically, and I'll explain what that means, these documents can then be sent to health information exchanges and to your providers, your health systems, in order for them to have access at the point of care. But there's a big but, and that is we are not the same in North Carolina and South Carolina. In South Carolina, and you will see in the video, I want to show you in just a few moments, they're already able to share it with their healthcare providers because their law lets them do that. In North Carolina, and this goes into our advocacy, the law has not changed yet to allow for electronic sharing. So even though when you create your Mind My Health account, it will ask who your health system is. So I put UNC, that's mine. You, uh, we've got our ECU, we've got Vident Friends, Novant Friends on this. You've got Cone Health. Even though you can comment on that, we really cannot legally share it with the health information exchange or with those providers yet, thanks to the law that we are trying to change, Senate Bill 147, House Bill 739. So anyway, that's for another discussion. So um, there's, there's some additional support for those and functionality for those who are in South Carolina and North Carolina, but anyone can use it. So what I want to do, Steve, I know you're going to ask a question, but I don't want to run out of time. And I do want to show a video so you know what we're talking about. Okay, so just real quickly before you get to that video, is there a charge for this service? And, you know, what if I don't live in North or South Carolina? Can I still use it? Steve, you're the best. And we did not set this up. So thank you. You're asking wonderful questions. There is not a charge for this service. It is a free online platform. And because it was developed, funded, created with support from the Duke Endowment, a really important uh, charitable foundation that supports the health of individuals and, and families and providers across the Carolinas. It was very important to them and very important to the, us that this is, while it is a secure platform, it is an open service in that there is no cost to it and there is no plans to have a cost for it because it was created by charitable uh, dollars in order to be a free resource. And I'm getting nods from the Sevier, so I'm not saying anything wrong, but you jump in if I am. Okay. So what I want to do in the interest of time is I was all preparing for today and then I heard about, but I found this video and that for those of you who are nostalgic, you're, if you recognize the voice, it is our own Virginia Slocum who created a video to really walk through people through. And so why would I show you in slides or a clunky? Um, I want to show you the video and there's two caveats. The video was created. It will talk you through the functionality of Mind My Health. But the example is a South Carolina example, not a North Carolina example. So there are two things you'll notice that should get you a little riled up from an advocacy perspective. When she talks about the South Carolina and they check to make sure that everything's there, you'll note that you'll only see a comment about one witness, all right? Whereas in North Carolina, our checklist, which you don't see, it's two witnesses and a notary. So you're gonna see a section where it says, have you done everything? South Carolina, it's two check boxes. The North Carolina one, I have an account that I had to fill out is actually four check boxes because they're like, yes, I have two witnesses. Yes, I have a notary. The other thing you'll see is that she does go over to how to share it with your provider. Urgh. So fantastic for South Carolina. They are actually able to send it over to their provider. We're not. So with that, I do want to, and I'm hoping you'll be able to see it and hear it well. Heather, while you bring that up, um, I'll just add, Steve had asked the question about um, what if I don't live in the Carolinas? Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we have that answer. Anybody can create an account from any state. The North Carolina forms and the South Carolina forms are preloaded into the platform. So they're easily accessible. So if you don't live in the Carolinas, you would just need to make sure you obtain whatever form is used in your state. But any form can be uploaded into the platform. It doesn't have to be one from the Carolinas. Wonderful. Thank you. Sometimes I can't always hear. So Jessica, I can see you. I cannot always hear when I do a video. So I'm going to start this video. It's just shy of five minutes. Okay. Mind My Health is an online platform designed to provide you and your loved ones access to your health care decisions at the point of care. 
It is accessible from computers, laptops, tablets, and smartphones at www.mindmyhealth.org. To create a new account, click any of the orange Start Now buttons on the Mind My Health homepage. To create your account, you will need to fill out some basic information, including your first and last name and state of residence. Mind My Health is free for users in North and South Carolina. You will also need a valid email address and a password that is a minimum of eight characters long with at least one letter, one number, and one symbol. You will use this email address and password to log into your account. Finally, you will need to accept the terms and conditions. To read the terms and conditions, click this hyperlink and then accept the terms by checking this box. about you and contains the appropriate signatures and or notarizations dependent upon the requirements for your state of residence. Once you have confirmed those items, you will be able to select a file to upload to your dashboard. Documents that are uploaded are verified by the Mind My Health team to ensure that they meet the legal requirements for the advanced directive. Then click next. Mind My Health is integrating its platform with Health Information Exchange Networks so that your provider will have access to your advanced directive at the point of care. Before storing your document, you will be asked for your consent to share the document with providers in the network. If you chose not to share your document, you can still store your document within Mind My Health so that it is accessible to you and your care contacts. If you chose to share, the information required includes name, address, and last four digits of your social security number. If you chose to share your document with providers, it is beneficial to select the hospital system that you most frequently seek care to help connect your advanced directive to your care providers. Here you can select one of the hospital systems presented or add your own. Now let's talk more about care contacts. Care contacts are family, friends, and caregivers that you wish to have access to your advanced care planning document. Mind My Health supports three care contacts for each person. To add a care contact, select Add a Care Contact. Enter and confirm the email address for your selected care contact and enter their relationship to you. Click Add Care Contact to complete the process. Each selected contact will need to accept your invitation and create their own free Mind by Health account to access your advanced care planning document. If you are selected as the care contact for other individuals, they will appear here below your contacts. With your account set up, documents uploaded to the dashboard, and care contacts identified, you are now in position to ensure that your wishes will be known at the point of care. For additional information, check out the Why Plan, How It Works, and FAQ pages linked at the top of the page. If you have further questions, there is a Contact Us link at the bottom of the page. Thank you for watching. Isn't that great?
Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that was informative, Heather. What what happens if I change my mind though? Am I able to change that plan? Yeah, I'm so glad. Um, yeah, I'm so glad you asked. And and Virginia mentioned it really quickly. And then there's one other thing I want to mention about the video is there right at the bottom it says delete it. So you can you control what's there. So you can delete it or you can replace it. So yeah, you can you can you control it. So you you can take off that document and then um and and so like for me because I did it through an attorney my documents are separate, but I want to create them into, so right now, some limitations right now that we're addressing is you can only up upload one document. And so you either want to have that one document be actually, you know, there's a way to combine documents. So when I scan it, I need my living will and my healthcare power of attorney and even my HIPAA forms all put into one. So that way, because you can only upload one right now, there are some Ideally, there are some updates that are going to be happening. And so that's kind of a, in the future. We ideally would like to have more. And ideally, uh, there's plans in place for the most post post. And so that may be happening in the future as well. And we had a conversation yesterday, some of us, as we've learned, the National Post is now part of the Epic EHR. But so, yes, you can like I want to upload mine so that way I can do a combined document and change what I have. The other thing that I want to say quickly, uh, because it wasn't mentioned in the video, is there was a place where you can identify if you're an organ donor. And if you're not an organ donor, how to have more information. The License to Give Trust Fund Commission has been very generous and also both with their money as well as their information education that we really want to promote as part of the advanced care planning doc, uh, documentation process and the conversations, your wishes to be an organ donor. And so Mind My Health also supports whether, you know, how you put information about that. So I think David Sevier may have referenced this in the chat, but what is the coalition doing in North Carolina to make advanced care planning easier? Oh my gosh, and I have not been able to look at the chat. So thank you. So I think, um, thank you for saying that. I think as a group, and I'm looking at a lot of our colleagues here, there's a number of us that are doing education programs ourselves. So a number of providers are here or community organizations. So uh, just literally getting the word out. Um, that's one way, educating people. The big way to ease the administrative burden and to make it easier would legislative changes would help. It would be a lot easier if it wasn't two witnesses and a notary, if we were like almost all of the other states where it was or a notary. So we are working behind the scenes to ease the administrative burden. We're working to make sure that um, and and we being the royal we, all the members, because I know a number of us are running, you know, we have our trellis friends running their education sessions. We've got ECU doing all kinds of fantastic work that we're going to learn about next week at our monthly meeting on April 19th. So um, uh, here's a question in case I share my provider. Um, so it's an interesting question. Yes, you could. That's a good question. Could you share your doctor on the account, I think what's interesting is the ability of how it gets into your medical record. And so it would go into your own hospital system of if you put your doctor down personally, how does that information? And one of the most powerful statistics that we do in our workshops is a statistic that UNC did is that, you know, 13% of the people that showed up at the UNC emergency department who actually only 13% of the people who showed up to the ED who had advanced directives did the providers have access to it? So um, it's part of it is is conversations about the, that provider. I, I said that really quickly. I don't know if I answered that. Um, Real I quickly too, before we run out of time, what if I go through this whole process and I still need help? Is there any help available um, to people who are having trouble with the platform? Yeah, and I think that's where that contact us button is on on the end so you can contact uh there's a few different ways now if you're on there there's a contact or we have a pretty robust um both through the serious illness coalition as well as mind my health that you know just they can email and it will get to jessica or will get to me and and we can help out and i did i didn't uh i would be remiss if i didn't do some more thank yous before we run out of time uh david was great we were emailing beforehand because there's people who came before me so we talked about Catherine and david sevier 
uh, Marisette wasn't able to be here today. Shane Lucas wasn't able to be here. He played a key role. And then folks like Carol Meyer, there were previous uh, interns, Brian Wood and Allison Crossman. And of course, the entire his Hig Health Sciences team with Ken Deans, Katrina Fryer, Jessica Siebensha, Virginia Slocum. So a lot. And then there's IT people. There's a guy named Jeff. Um, so I was like, so a lot of folks behind the scenes over the last few years and even right now are trying to work hard to get this into more people's um, keyboards. So thank you to them. And I think with that, we're at time unless there are any, there are, we can go a few minutes after if there are questions. <laughs> in the chat. So uh, just so once again, will you just remind us of where to find all this information? Yes, thank you. It is uh, Mind My Health, all one word, mindmyhealth.org. And if for some reason you don't remember mindmyhealth.org, you can go to the coalition website. Many thanks to Jessica. Last week, she made sure that there was a smooth link from our coalition website. If you go into the own and plan for your own care section around advanced care planning, you actually can, you'll see lots of videos that were created on the importance of advanced care planning. And then you'll see a link uh, to Mind My Health. Heather, I can't stop not say we. I see Kenya here, and the folks in the HIE in North Carolina have been big fans from the beginning, and they want very much to be a part of getting this information into people's hands. And so that legislation, if if we could just get that through, there would be such a great opportunity here in North Carolina to uh, get get those documents just a tad bit closer than they are right now. Yeah, we've gotten it approved in the Senate one time and now it's approved in the House, but they-, they Now don't... it's stuck in the Senate a little bit. So we'll yeah. have a legislative update. Uh, politics are uh, messy. And so while we would love to see it done in this short session, we had a, a, a what if and planning meeting for what will happen um, and how to even then and, and we should all be happy that Brian Wood, the young man that you mentioned, who was who did all the FAQs that were on the Mind My Health site, right, is a, a, has since then gone to medical school, is now an internal medicine resident at UNC, UNC. and is looking to do geri be a geriatrician. So we are so excited. And he's written papers now in the scholarly side of this on advanced care planning. And so he's looking at doing it for people who are deaf and who have um, uh, speech and, and language problems so that we can get this to everybody. Wonderful.